Worship Him. Worship Him. Oh, worship Him. Bow down and worship Him. Enter. So 
lift your hands and worship God if you want the Lord to have his way in you come on somebody lift your hands and worship God come on somebody lift your hands and worship God Jesus hallelujah come on somebody open up your mouth and give the Lord a mighty praise despite our situation this morning we still have two hands and two feet Come on, somebody lift your hands and worship the Lord. Somebody lift your hands and exalt the name of Jesus. Oh, my Jesus, hands and his feet were wounded. And his sides were bleeding too. Oh, what a grand glorious morning when my Lord was crucified oh my Jesus hands and his feet were wounded hallelujah and his side were bleeding too. It was a grand, yeah, yeah, grand and glorious morning when my Lord was crucified. My Jesus said, and his feet were wounded. Hands. My 
praise the Lord, praise Him, praise Him, praise the Lord, praise Him. I thank Him for joy and peace divine. Oh yeah, when I was sad and low, I did not know what to do. I thank Him, I thank Him for saving my soul. Yeah. Hey. 
Worship the name of Jesus. Jesus. Somebody lift holy hands and worship God. Hallelujah. Let's worship the name of Jesus. Let's continue to worship the name of Jesus. Let's continue to worship the name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son, who healed his life on atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Let's worship the name of Jesus. Let's worship the name of Jesus. Praise God. This morning, I must give God thanks and praise. This morning, I must greet God, who is the head of my life, and my soon coming king. I want to greet my bishop. First Lady Malcolm, who is at home watching. I want to greet my ministers, my deacons, evangelists, missionaries, saints in Christ, viewers online. Please accept greetings in the name of Jesus. Because at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue must confess because Jesus Christ, he is Lord. Let's worship the name of Jesus. Let's bless the name of Jesus. In the church today is empty, but we still can lift up the name of Jesus. We still can worship the name of Jesus because this is a privilege to know that yes, one more time we can be in the assembly to worship and to lift up God's holy name. Worship the name of Jesus. This morning I just wanna give God thanks. This morning I just wanna give God praise. This morning I just want to honor him. Just morning I just want to lift up and adore his wonderful name. Because if it had not been for God on my side, this morning I don't know where I would have been. I've been so much through the past two weeks. But I don't know where I get the strength to go. And God has given me the strength. And I just want to thank him. I just want to worship him. I just want to lift him up this morning. It's indeed a privilege for me to be here this morning just to show God how much I am grateful to him, how much I'm thankful to him. Let's worship the name of Jesus. Let's bless the name of Jesus this morning to open our divine, this afternoon rather, to open our divine service. We will sing 189 from our Worshiping song, He brought me out. Let's praise the name of Jesus. Praise Steam. Let's praise the name of Jesus. Let's worship the name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. I was distressed, need Jehovah's dread from. And low in the pits where my sins dragged me down, I cried to the Lord from the deep my clay, who tenderly brought me out to go. Please. 
Let us pray. Most kind and eternal Father, we give you thanks, we give you praise for this blessed opportunity to be in your house once more, just to lift up holy hands and just to magnify your name. And so God, as we come this afternoon, God, to, to render praise unto you, we pray mighty God, Lord, you'll consecrate us to thy service, Lord. Wash us, Father God, fix us for service. As Lord, we, we avail ourselves to be used by you. We pray, mighty God, that your Holy Spirit will tabernacle with us. Let self be slain. Let self be nullified. And let you receive all the glory and all the honor. Father God, your people are watching in expectancy, waiting. God, for a move of you, we pray, mighty God, that there shall be a move. We pray, mighty God, that your Holy Spirit will come on down like a dove. We pray, mighty God, that through this live service, that somebody will be healed. We pray, God, that somebody will be touched, somebody will be set free. We pray, mighty God, as your man servant uh, prepare and ready to come and bring a word. I pray, mighty God, Lord, you will unctionize him. I pray God you'll spiritualize him. I pray God you'll speak through him. So God he will not speak of himself but God he will speak of you. Holy Spirit we ask God to, to fall afresh on him. God let there be a fresh anointing. Let there be a fresh flow. We declare God that there shall be an open heaven and there shall be a release in this region in the name of Jesus. There shall be a release on the online there shall be a release of your power. We declare your manifested glory. Oh God, to have its way in our midst today. We declare it, mighty God, that it shall be so. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Lead and direct. Take charge of your dear sister, Sister Jasmine, as she avail herself to be used by you, God, to, to officiate this service. We pray, God, you'll touch her, God, strengthen her, mighty God. We present the praise team, the musician before you, the technical team, 
everyone God that is here to, 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 to give to this service so Lord your people can receive uh, something on today we ask God to do your work your shovel we present our, our own Bishop Otis Malcolm before you God we pray mighty God that your healing virtue will just run through his body even now we declare that he's already a victor in the name of Jesus we declare God that he's already healed by the power of the Holy Ghost. We believe God that you are the God of healing, the God of miracles. Do it again God as we look to you and not another and tell you thanks in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. This morning or this afternoon our scripture reading is taken from St. Matthew 6 reading from verse 25 to the end and I will read. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold, the fowls of the hair, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thoughts, can add one cubic unto this stature? And why take ye thoughts for raiment? Consider the, light, consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which so do, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the hoven, shall he not much more clothe you, O he of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink? For whether with hell shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things shall be added unto you. 34 and appointed. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thoughts for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Here ended another portion of God's powerful word. We honor it by saying, thanks be to God. At this time, Minister Christie will come with a welcome. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I know it's just a few of us, but we can still hope in our mouth and just release a hallelujah. Somebody shout a hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody shout a hallelujah. hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord Jesus. My honor is to him who is the keeping care of our lives. Happy am I to be in God's service one more time. My task is very easy this afternoon to make all our visitors and members that are watching online to make you welcome to the Agape Church of God seventh day. I know it is very hard for you to stay home and to watch, but uh, we want to say to you that it is not our fault. We just have to be obedient to the protocols that are set, that are governed by our country. Amen. And so we are doing our best so the word can reach every nook and cranny. Amen. And so we want to welcome you this morning to this live stream, this live stream of hope, where, where I am sure you'll hear a word to help you along your journey. I'm sure you'll hear a word to help you to fight against sickness and poverty and all the stuff that is happening in our society. There is a word for you this afternoon. I want to welcome you to this very humble church, the Agape Church of God, seven day we are located at 18 North Street, Old Arbor. We're in the heart of Old Arbor. Uh, but, but guess what? Old Arbor is in our heart. Amen? We are a small church, but even though we are small, we are small enough to know you, but large enough to serve you. We are here 
willing to pray your strength, to pray your healing, to pray your miracles, to pray your breakthrough. Just watch and be blessed as we continue to reach lives through, the, through this broadcast. Be encouraged that God is still in control. In spite of this new variant, we are, we are still aware, we are still, we are still comforted by the word of God that he is with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. He is our healer. He is our balm in Gilead. And so we will lean on him in this time of dilemma. And so I want to say welcome again on behalf of our bishop, Bishop Otis Duane Malcolm and Lady Malcolm and all the officers and members of this church. We want to say welcome, welcome to this broadcast. Just enjoy and worship God with us. Turn your living room, your dining room, your bedroom into your place of worship. And let us worship God in the beauty of holiness. Put your hands there for yourselves. Bless the name of the Lord Jesus. At this time we are going right into worshiping God in our giving. In our giving. And so even though you are home, your own. And I know there are a lot of persons who want to give, so we are still given the opportunity. You will see the, the, the uh, different platforms online where you can give this afternoon. And so bow your heads with me while I bless your gifts before you even give it. Father, we bless you. We honor you. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercies. Thank you for this opportunity. And Lord, you have given unto us to to come into your house just to give you praise. And so, God, as your people are about to give, we pray, mighty God, that, Lord, you'll bless your giving, bless your effort, open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing on somebody as we look to you and not another. Do it because you are the God who knows how to do it best. As we look to you and tell you thanks, in Jesus' name, amen. At this time, the praise team will come and bless us as you give to the honor and glory of Jesus' name. The praise team. Shall we praise the Lord? Shall we worship the Lord? Praise God. Conform to the image of you. There's a 
as a peace running deep in my soul. My spirit bears witness that I'm a child of a king. what we are going through this morning doesn't matter the situation that we are in let us continue to keep the peace of God within our soul the man of God is coming to us this morning with the word he's not a stranger to us I don't want you to look at the preacher this morning I just want you to listen to the word that God is sending to us through the preacher this morning because the word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And the word of God says, Sanctify them through thy true, because thy word is true. The word of I hid in my heart, that I will not sin against thee. The word of God is quick, it is sharper than any two-edged sword. Man shall not live by bread alone, but from the word that comes from God. The grass wither it, the flower fade it, but the word of God shall stand. He send his word and heal them and deliver them from their destructions. I shall not die. I shall not die. We will not die, but we will live and declare. The word of God. Let's worship the name of Jesus. Let's praise the name of Jesus. Let's honor the name of Jesus. Our worshipers online and our few members in the church, I just want you to accept, stand this morning and receive our minister, Minister Shamar Grant, in care of the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. 
praise the Lord. They are new every morning. Brand new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness for thee. Someone will be blessed, Lord. Use me, Lord. Use me like never before. In your name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. I want to greet God who is the head of my life. And my soon coming king next to my, my bishop in his absence. Lady Malcolm, ministers, evangelists, missionaries, saints of Christ. Persons on, on, online. On the online platforms, I want to greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. To my moderator, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sister Jasmine. That's it, Sister Jasmine. I got it this time. Praise the Lord. Thank you for reading the scripture, Matthew 6, verse 25 to the end. But I really like verse 34. I'm reading from the NIV version. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Lamentation 3, 22 to 23. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Come on, you have to work with me today. Now, neighbor, today's mercy for today's trouble and tomorrow's mercy for tomorrow's mer tomorrow's trouble uh, I don't think you really get it I don't think you really get it I'll go from top therefore do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself each day has 
enough trouble of its own. Lamentation 3 verse 22 to 23. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed for his cup compassions never fail they are new every morning great is thy faithfulness now i want you to look at your neighbor again and say neighbor today's mercy for today's trouble and tomorrow's mercy for tomorrow's trouble praise god praise god praise god today Today's mercies are for today's burden. One was this. Every day God anoints a measure of pleasure and pain for that day. Like the old hymn says, His, He whose heart is kind beyond all measures gives us each day what he deems best. Lovingly, it's part of pain and pleasure meaningly toil with peace and rest kind beyond all measures the lord gives pain and pleasures to each day as he deems best we do not always agree with what god deems best for us it is hard for us to feel that he is kind beyond all measures when he gives us pain causing pain is not generally showing kindness especially if God's measure for one day is a lot more than another day. But it's true as we will see more fully in a moment. God gives each day his wise and loving measures for pain and pleasure. There is a fresh mercy from God each day. Appointed pain Today's mercies are not designed to carry tomorrow's burden. There will be mercies tomorrow for that. Today's mercies are for today's burdens. But the question may ask, but tomorrow, what about tomorrow? What will become of our children? What will become of our health? Will we go blind or deaf or lose our memories? Who will take care of us? Will we spend the last 10 years of our lives outliving all of our friends and family? What will become of our marriages? What will we ever trust again? Will we ever laugh and play and pray and thank in peace? Will we be there for our children? Will we be there for each other? Will it be sad and strained and dis this satisfying for 30 and 40 more years. What will it be like tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow? What will become of our church? What will tomorrow bring or Wednesday or Thursday or next week or next year, 10 years from now? Will we be together? What about tomorrow, you may ask? We, will we have the strength for for tomorrow when it comes and to live it well and wisely and even joyful no matter what God's measure of pain and pleasure new mercies for tomorrow given tomorrow the strength to live tomorrow will begin tomorrow not today and it will be given our task today is not to have strength needed for tomorrow burdens our task today is to live by the mercies given for today. And to believe that there will be new mercies for tomorrow. Today's mercies do not include strength for tomorrow. They include faith that tomorrow unseen mercies will be sufficient for tomorrow. I can't express how important I believe this for the living of the Christian life. For children, for teenagers, for students, for young adults in the 
work world for middle aged people facing major life changes, for older people with tremendous uncertainties before them, for single and married people. It is important for our natural and strong is the impulse of our hearts to want to feel sufficient today for tomorrow's challenge. We don't like when the gods read empty at the end of the day and we have to go to sleep if we cannot if we can not feel in the power for tomorrow's trouble the christian secret of dealing with trouble there is a secret to the christian life here that i may i may want you to get a handle on if you don't if you are if you go on desperately needing to feel tomorrow's strength for tomorrow. If you, sorry, if you go on desperate needing the, the feel today's strength for tomorrow, then it seemed to me that either you will cave in under pressure of excess anxiety or you will find a worldly strategy for developing ego strength and persuade yourself that you really are sufficient for tomorrow's trouble. Neither of those is God's way. God's way is summed up in two passages of scriptures. One is Matthew 6, 34. Do not, do not be anxious for tomorrow, for tomorrow will care for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Matthew 6, verse 34. Let me tell you what Matthew 6, verse 34 is really saying. It does not mean make no preparation for tomorrow. Uh, it does not mean making no preparation for tomorrow needs. If you are, if you are a farmer and the thought of tomorrow's empty silos should cause you to sow your field with corn months before you need the corn, almost everything that is worth doing requires some forethought and planning and preparation. Jesus said, which of you desire to build a tower does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it. The point in Matthew 6 verse 34 is not don't make wise preparations. The point is don't bring troubles and uncertainties of carrying out those preparations tomorrow into today. Because at the end of the day, each day has enough trouble on it. I need you to talk back with me. Each day has its own trouble of it. What is meant by enough? What does Jesus mean by enough? Or as the old authorized version says, sufficient to the day is the evil thereof. What does it mean by sufficient? He means that your sovereign heavenly father who is kind and wise beyond all measures give us each day that he deems best. Lovingly, it's, it's part of pain and pleasure. Each day's troubles are enough. They are sufficient because God determines their limit. Ah, uh, you don't get that. You don't get that. You don't get that. Each day, troubles are enough. They are sufficient because God's determined, God determines their limit. God decides what is enough and what is sufficient. Uh, you, can, you, you, you can know some of the pressures that are coming tomorrow. And a part of your job may to make some preparation for them. Those preparations are part of today's sufficient. But how those preparations will turn out tomorrow and whether you feel strong enough today to do your part tomorrow, that is not something God wants us to worry about. That is not something that God wants us to carry today. Those are tomorrow burdens. God does not give mercies today for bearing tomorrow's burdens. Uh, for example, we are on a staff and we must design worship service for a while. Uh, it's like the farmer, we know that if there is going to be a harvest, 
uh, of corporate worship on Sabbath, there needs to be some plowing, some sowing, and watering early in the week. Preparation. That is okay. Jesus wants us to do that. But what about the question that starts to arise from flesh? How will it go on Sabbath? Will the people be there? Will God meet us? Will it be real and deep and earnest and life-changing and soul-winning and Christ-exalting? Will the people be disappointed? With these questions, we can cross the line from faithful preparation to unfaithful anxiety. Uh, we, 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 we cross over from dealing with today's sufficient burdens, which is preparation, and begin to borrow tomorrow's trouble. How will it be received? That, that, and this is a spiritual very dangerous because today's mercies are given by God for today burdens, not tomorrow. Lamentation 3 verse 22 to 23. Now where in the scripture do I get this, this confidence that God not only gives the trouble for each day that is sufficient for that day, but also his mercies which are tailor-made to carry that day's trouble. I get it from among other places, but I choose Lamentation 3, 22 to 23. It says, the Lord's loving kindness indeed never cease, for his compassions never fail. They are new. They are new. You have to talk back to me today, no man. They are new. They are new. Every morning, great is thy faith. Fullness. It is a phrase that they are new every morning that gives me the great confidence that each day's mercy, each day's kindness, they are specifically for that day. Uh, ponder with me. Let, let that sink. His mercies are new. Uh, come on, Charlie. His mercies are new. Uh, the question may ask, why are they new every morning? Why does God do it that way? It's not because yesterday mercies were bad or weak. Uh, it's because they were yesterday's. Yesterday's mercies were for yesterday burdens. Today's mercies are for today's burdens. Uh, they are new every uh, they are like manna in the wilderness. You can't keep it overnight. Uh, enough comes for each day. And you live on God day by day. Or you don't live on God. Uh, the, the, the hymn gets it right again. The second verse that says, Every day the Lord himself is near with special mercy for each hour. Uh, each hour, each day the Lord gives himself is near me with a special mercy for each hour a special mercy for each hour uh, the mercy to carry us through this hour is given in its hour we desperately need this truth this truth will save your life again and again if you grasp it and live it because how many times in life do we come at the end of our resources and say there isn't anything in here anymore or one more straw and this camel's back will break and we dis we despair that tomorrow will be rolled on today's depleted condition and at this and, and at that moment we desperately need this truth uh, god will not expect you to carry carry more than one straw with these present mercies when the next straw is added, the mercies will be new. Again, when the mercies, when the next straw is added, the mercies will be new. So we must not compound today's load with fretting over tomorrow. We must, we must, we must not doubt God and say, I have no more strength. So tomorrow will be impossible to live. Uh, that is not true. Uh, that is not true. You will, you may, you will ask to be, to be, you will be, you will not be asked. 
to live tomorrow on today's strength. What you need today is not tomorrow's strength, but today's faith that tomorrow mercies will be new and will be enough. There's something different between experience of faith for tomorrow's power and the actual experience of that power itself. Faith stands on the promise of God and waits and hopes in the weakness and peace. And of course, that waiting and hoping is part of today's mercy. Part of today's mercy is the ability to trust that there will be sufficient mercy for tomorrow. And we will trust in that, in that because God promised us in lamentation. But in spite of all these peace, all the peace and that faith can bring about today, it is not yet tomorrow's mercy or tomorrow's power. There's a difference. And that is why there is such battle that goes on. We want the feeling of adequacy today for what we will have to go through tomorrow. But God says, trust me and I will give it to you when you need it. The Lord command, do not worry about tomorrow. It's a reminder for kingdom servants to live in the moment and to put their trust in him. For every circumstance and situation, no difficulty is greater than our great God. Our worrying about tomorrow is looking at our future as if God will not be there to take care of us. But Jesus teaches us to live in God's presence day by day uh, and deal with each problem when it comes through prayer our heavenly father will be with us tomorrow to take care of us have you ever heard have you ever tried to reassure someone when they are worried about something and you know everything is going to be okay you might say no need to worry Three reasons now that there is no need to worry. First, no need to worry because it does not help. No need to worry because it does not help. Jesus addresses this in verse 27. He says, can any of you add any moment to his lifespan by worrying? This is a rhetorical question, meaning that it does not need an answer. The, the obvious answer is no. You cannot add a single moment to your life by worrying. Worry cannot add a single minute to your life. Worry can, cannot add a single dollar to your bank account. Worry cannot add a single point to your GPA. Worry cannot impress your boss. Worry cannot help your kids behave better. Worry cannot strengthen your marriage. Worry cannot help any of us. However, did you know that worrying can have negative effect in your life? Worry can damage your health. Worry can damage your relationships. Worry can rob your joy. Worry can rob opportunities. Worry can affect ourselves. Our worry can affect others. Our worry can affect our relationship with God. Worry only has negative effects. One might respond, preacher man, if I don't worry, I won't get important stuff done. They may ask the question, let me point out that there is a genuine place for concern. Concern and worry are not the same thing. Uh, concern acknowledges that something needs careful thought. Worry is given to consuming fear. Concern gives you, gives you way to planning. Worry gives way to fear. Concern leads to healthy attention. Worry leads to unhealthy anxiety. Concerns move you to action. Worry immobilizes you. Planning for tomorrow is time well spent. Worrying about tomorrow is time wasted. I said planning for tomorrow is time well spent. 
worrying about tomorrow is time wasted. Jesus concludes the passage by saying in verse 34, Therefore, I can't ring this anymore. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. Because tomorrow will worry about each day has its own trouble. Each day has enough to occupy our minds. Why would you want to add any worry to what we already have? Uh, there is no advantage to worry and anxiety. It does not help. As I said before, worry and anxiety has no positive effects. The, the only negative effects, you no need to worry because it, it does not help. The second one is no need to worry because God knows what you need. Jesus gives us two primary examples from the nature to prove this point on us. First, he gives us the example of the birds in the, in the air. Look at verse 26. He said, consider the birds of the sky. They don't sow or reap or gather into barns. Yet your heavenly father feeds them. Aren't you worthy more than they are? I think there, there's very little explanation needed for this point. Jesus is the master, is a masterful teacher. Uh, and, and so we understand what he is saying. The birds and other animals for that matter have plenty of food to eat. You rarely ever hear of wild animals dying of, of starvation. God's nature created orders as provision building for feeding his creatures. God provides for his creatures. How much, does, how much more does God provide for the pinnacle of his creation, human beings? Jesus asks, aren't you worth more than they? The question is yes. We are worth more than they are. We are worth more than all the rest of the creation. God knows what we, we need more than, what, than, 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 than how we think we need it. Jesus then gives us a second example in verse 28 through to 30. And, and this says, why do you worry about clothes? Observe how the, the, the wildflowers of the field grow. They don't labor or spin tread. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in, in all his splendor was adorned like one of these. If that's how God clothes your grass of, of the field, which is here today, then thrown in the furnace tomorrow, won't he, won't he, won't he do much more for you? Won't he do much for you? Some of your some of some of your Bible translation may say lily of the of the field, but this probably referred to generic flowers in the field. Jesus' point here is not about exactly which flowers is adorned the best, but the but but that God adorns the flowers in the field. Again, the point translates very easy, easily for us. If God can clothe the flowers of the field, the lesser part of creation, won't he also clothe human beings? Uh, the greatest part of creation. Uh, so we don't need to... We, 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 so we, we need to trust God in this matter. Uh, don't you trust that you are important to God and move important than the rest of us? Uh, creation... Do you trust that God can provide for you? The question is asked. Do you trust that God can provide for you? Do you trust that God knows what's best for you? He's, he is our creator and for those of us that have given ourselves to him, he is our father. Uh, everything that we need comes from him. James tells us in the book of James 1 verse 17 that every good and perfect thing comes from uh, food, clothing, money, family, uh, faith, love, grace, forgiveness. It all comes from the creator. Uh, it, it, it all comes from our heavenly father. Ah, uh, God, oh uh, God, oh uh, God. Towards the end of the verse of 30, 
Jesus even challenges our faith. He says, you of little faith. He says that our worry related to earthly necessary uh, comes as a, re as a result of our lack of faith on our heavenly father. If the focus of our life is only the things in this life, we have a faith problem. Uh, you don't get that. If the focus of our life is only the things in this life, we have a faith problem. We concern with our food and our finances and our fashions. But Jesus is concerned with our faith because our focus is messed up. Ah, well, there, well, where should our focus be? I want you to look at verse 33. He said, but seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be provided for you. This takes, this takes us to our final point. Praise God. No need to worry what were what we really need didn't say don't worry don't work for these things when Jesus is saying that the life is more than these things there is something greater that, than these things there is something that should be really consumed our focus uh, then he tells us what the, the, the greater the greater thank you the greater things is he is greater seek first the kingdom of God when we seek the kingdom of God and his ways first and foremost those things will work out he says all these things will I provide it for you get your priority straight tell your neighbor get your priority straight and everything will fall into place Look at your name and say, neighbor, 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 neighbor. Get your party straight and everything else will put in place. Uh, you need to recalibrate your and refocus your life and what is most important. Because I hear the Bible, I hear the song that says, be not dismayed. What the time God will take care of you beneath his wings of love abide. God will I need a church today. I say God will take care of you. Hear Jeremiah say, For I know the plans I have for you. Declare the plan. Plans for welfare and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. In your Psalms, the Lord is on my side and will not fear what man do to me. If the Lord 
is on my side. Tell me. Oh, somebody shout his name. Yes, yeah, somebody says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Yes, yeah, sister can't say, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Oh, somebody not worshiping with me. I said, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. And do not lean on your own understanding. But in all thy ways, Acknowledge him and he will direct our path. I hear somebody say, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall it be tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or damage or sword? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Then what shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who shall be against us? Hear the psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall. Oh, yes, 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 yes. He is. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. Turn to your neighbor and say, Neighbor, don't worry about tomorrow. Ah, don't worry about tomorrow. Each day has its own trouble. I hear the songwriter says, don't war about tomorrow. I just, I just live. Oh, hallelujah. I said, turn to your neighbor. I said, neighbor, each day has enough trouble. You don't need to worry about that. Tell somebody, you fret too much, man. You fret too much, man. Did you with the cut and go through? Now watch your fears. You fret too much, man. If God is on my side, things are ready. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I wish I had a church. I don't know about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. I don't borrow from the sunshine for its skies may turn to gray. I don't worry on the future uh, for I know that Jesus said and today he didn't say tomorrow he didn't say tomorrow because mercies are new every morning he didn't say yesterday ah but he said and today i'll walk beside him for i know he owns ah the song said many things about tomorrow i don't seem to understand for i know who owns tomorrow and i know who holds my hand somebody when tribulation come I will look to my window to see when the sun set because in the morning there shall be new mercies mercies mercy we wrote my life and it will say of the Lord he is my refuge and my strength. I tell somebody, back up, back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. That's when the sun rises. I have new mercies. Come with all your want today. Come with all your tribulation. Ah, 
the devil may come with everything ah, your boss may give you a problem but make him do it because God designed it with the mercy he gave her for today but you see for tomorrow tomorrow I have new mercies new mercies somebody shout new mercy somebody shout new mercies I'm closing, I'm closing, I'm closing, but the second verse says, and I love the second verse, it said, pardon my sin and peace that endureth, thine old dear presence to cheer and to guide, strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with ten thousand beside. Hallelujah. The closing thought should we be concerned with the things of this world? Yes, you should be concerned about the things of this world. We need to plan and work and take care of ourselves and our family. But the question is should we be worried? about the things of this world uh, it says the answer should be no we should seek God and his ways and the rest will work out uh, we need to focus on more on God more which takes us to the bottom line tomorrow mercies for tomorrow trouble Sometimes we fret too much, Christy. Minister Christy. We fret too much. Cry too much. I remember we used to play Domino Pompey. You would say, Brother Christopher would say, You fret too much, man. You think you're not winning the game? Sometimes we fret over some things where, where we, we don't need it, man. We don't need it. I went to my school. I think it was week before last. And I asked them, How much money I owe them? And they, they, they said to me, they said to me that in year one I did some extra courses and my school fee that I paid will not cover that. So I said, how much credits? They said, 10 credits. I said, how much for one credit? $11,000. Now, we, we, we calculate that we're looking at over $100,000 for courses that I did extra. Now the thing is, Mario Christy, I don't have the money to pay that. But I'm not worrying. I'm not worrying. I'm not crying. I'm not going to worry because there must be a way. Now in the lockdown, church lockdown, everywhere lockdown for three days. And some people live by going on the road and hustling. But may I come to tell you this morning, this evening, don't worry about it. If God is on your side, things already better you don't need to worry about anything because ah, the mercies are new every morning fret not yourself because they are new every morning red you red is thy face See the money, you don't see the money. I'm come on, he said, but they for they are new every morning. I do that. I do I'm talking to you online. Oh great. I'm talking to you online. I don't know your situation, but tell us Your 
and God keep you. But remember, for there are new every morning. Brand new, brand new. Mercies on today's summer's for Tomorrow's mercies for tomorrow's trouble. Trust God that He will make a way. He will make a way when it seems to be no way. For God bless you in Jesus' name. Somebody shout the hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout the hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout the hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, somebody lift up your hands in this house. I know we're just few. But if you believe that there's grace, and it's grace on you every morning. Come on, somebody lift your hand and let's give a lot of shout of praise. Come on, they are new, they are new, they are new. I want to thank the Lord for his man servant who remind us this afternoon that his grace, God's grace is new every morning. I know we had experienced this, the tropical storm grace just a few days ago and everybody is talking about grace and what grace did but this grace is more powerful than the tropical storm grace. Because we can look to receive this grace every morning. When our foot hit the ground, we can declare, Great is thy faithfulness. And so we're giving God thanks this afternoon for his man servant, Minister Shamar Grant, for availing himself to be used by God to bring such a prolific word in this time where people are worrying people are fretting because of all the stuff that is happening around us and all the persons that are dying around us and all the persons that are getting sick around us but we are reminded that is grace is grace they are new every morning put your hands in for the man of God I know you're online but stretch your hands toward your screen and declare bless him Lord somebody just type on your screen bless him Lord somebody type on your screen bless him Lord come on somebody type bless him Lord somebody shout bless him Lord bless him Lord we declare the blessings of the Lord over his life and I never cease to to use the opportunity to release a blessing on God's servant. We pray that the doors that are closed in life, we declare them open. We declare that whatever he needs, the Lord will supply because of his faithfulness. Somebody seal that with an amen. Somebody seal it with an amen. Amen. The blessing of the Lord make it rich and had it no sorrow. We want to thank the Lord again for a word for the season. A word for the season. A word for the season. At this time, there are some prayer requests. There are some prayer requests that we want to pray for. There is a
Orlando who is sick and we want to pray God's healing over his life and also remember our bishop who is not feeling well but we declare that he is well in the name of the Lord Jesus Amen so at this time I want the church to join me I don't want to do this alone but we want to do it together as we believe as we believe God for these persons who are requesting prayer Father we bless you we honor you we know no other source but you we have no other help but you we have no other God but you and so father as we present Alanda before you we pray mighty God that he will receive your healing virtue we pray mighty God that those stripes will touch him even now the word of God declare by your stripes we are healed and so even now, God, I don't know where he is, but we know that there is no distance in power. And so even now, God, we stand upon our authority as servants of the Most High God. And we declare, mighty God, that there shall be a healing now. We declare, God, that there shall be healing in every fiber of his body, every organ that is acting uh, acting the way they, are, they should not be acting. We declare God that normality shall hit him even now. We declare mighty God that whatever it is, we declare the powerful healing of almighty God to visit him even now. We declare it not by might nor by power, but by the spirit of the most high God. God and so God we speak that very same healing over Bishop Otis Dwayne Malcolm's life Lord the church stand in agreement even now he is our spiritual leader he is our father and papa and so God the devil is trying to put his hands on the man of God but right now I stand in this house as a son and God we declare Clear the heel of the Lord in Bishop Malcolm's life. We say, You dragon, take your filthy hands of the man of God. We call for the power of God to bring about healing. Hey! We declare healing in the name of Jesus. We say sickness. You have no control over Bishop Malcolm's life. You call him for a time as this. You call him from your in his mother's womb. And so right now, God, we say right now, we say devil, touch not the Lord's anointed and do his prophet no harm. We declare healing. We declare healing. We stand militant in this house. We stand militant in this house. You dare not, oh God Almighty. You dare not. You dare not. Bishop Otis Malcolm. God has called him. He is chosen. And to heavy devil. And to heavy demon. And wish to rise up. And let the man of God. Oh God. We say like Job slay. Yo God. Don't he slay me. In all my appointed time. Don't he slay me. Yet will. Bishop Malcolm will keep courage. Bishop Malcolm will keep courage. Because we believe. We speak it. That he is healed. It is not by might. Nor by power. But by the spirit. And the most high God. The open church of God. We stand. In agreement. We said Papa. Be healed. Father. Be healed. Bishop Malcolm, we call you by name. We 
say healing, 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 healing. healing. Hey. Woo. Hey. Ella ba 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 koshando bosai. Shikataya mando re bohusha, shela bohusanda, manda bakata sikitushe, liba kandi bohusha, manda bohushikataya, riba kanda bohushende, randa bosikataya, liba kunda, shanda ikatosaya, riba kundi bohaya, ilen, ilen, ilen. Jesus forgive me if I'm making too much noise but this is this is my papa God has set him over my life as a father as a spiritual guidance so ain't no devil gonna touch him ain't no devil gonna do what he want to do ah uh, God we stand in our authority and we declare back up devil and back off this man of God has oh God God has called him God has anointed him. And so you better take your hands off him. We declare healing. In the name of Jesus. 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 Ooh. 
let your healing virtue flow. And so if you're here online, as I said earlier, receive that healing. Receive that healing. Receive that healing. Because it is not by might. Oh, glory. Nor by power. Shia. Mm. But by thy spirit. Whew, glory to God. God is still in the healing business. And let me hasten to say this to the church that I know that God is still in the healing business. Last week, Sabbath, I came to the body of Christ and I did tell you that my mom is in the hospital with an heart condition. And by Sunday morning, they released her from the hospital. So I know the God in whom I serve. So I don't know about you, but I, I know the God that we serve. He's a miracle working God. And so if God did it for my mama, he will do it for Bishop Mark. I wish I had a church to talk back to me. So God will do it for you too. Healing is the children. And so I am reporting victory in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we're going home. We're going home. We're going home. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, preacher. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody just shout, thank you, Jesus. Somebody just shout, thank you, Jesus. Come on, I'm, I'm not hearing everybody. Somebody shout, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And so we are believing God for healing and miracle. Because that is a God that we serve. The God of healing and miracles. In the name of Jesus. At this time, the announcements are as follows. As we all know, there are new protocols that we have, to, we have to work with. And so as a church, we are law-abiding people. Our leader is a law-abiding leader. And so as long as it is not going against God's words or going against the will of God, then we will abide. Amen. Amen. And so... The announcements are as follows. We are still at 20. And so we are just working with the technical team, the praise team, and persons who are taking part in the service. That is the way it is going now. And so we are going to work it that way until there is until better days. Amen? Because we believe it is not forever. But God is up to something. And so even when the enemy strikes, God is up to something bigger. And so we're believing God for the healing of, his, of this land. For the healing of this land. Bless the name of the Lord Jesus. And so please, rem please remember that, that we are not independent of your prayers. Pray for the technical team, the praise team, and those and the ministers here and our bishop. That we will continue to work the work of him who sent us. Amen. Amen. Could you all stand with me? Could you lift your right hands with me as we release you? Psalms 19 and verse 14. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. God bless you in Jesus' name. See you online Wednesday night. God bless you. <laughs>